This is Miles TV. Welcome to Smiles TV. I'm Stephanie Anthony Miles, and you're watching the best community affairs broadcast in the Midwest. Dr. Cornell West is in East St. Louis, Illinois. Remember, Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He was crucified and buried, and he rose on the third day. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shall be saved. Stay tuned for this great broadcast where you'll see some snippets of Dr. Cornell West. We're on fire for justice, and justice is what love looks like in public. Hmm. They on fire. Now Walter Hawkins wrote a song called, What Is This? Right. Something on the inside won't let me keep my peace. That's fire. <laughs> and somebody said, oh, I was most alive when I was dancing on Friday night <laughs> to some funk by James Brown or some melodies by Erica Badu. I said, no, you're just having fun. You ain't fell in love yet. <laughs> Other people say, when my mama told me she would take a bullet for me and my father said he sacrificed everything, I realized I learned how to love and when I did the same thing, I recognized, lo and behold, that love was deeper than just having fun. But it's based on your experience. And human experiences all the way down from Africa, Asia, Latin America, the United States. It could be Shakespeare, Dante, Goethe. It could be Donny Hathaway from St. Louis. It could be Tony Mars from Ohio. When they talk about what it is to be human, they go right to love. Over and over, no matter what color, no matter what gender. As a Christian, how do you get across to individuals to look at the truth between the Democrats and the Republicans and not just choose sides based on your, your being you know, committed to one or the other? Well, one is, oh, you don't assume that you commit yourself to either one. You commit yourself to truth, commit yourself to justice. When either one seems to be leaning toward truth, you understand that and you proceed. But my pro I don't think we need to limit ourselves just to those two. We need to keep focus on poor people, on working people, on folk catching hell. That's right. And you know what? East St. Louis, Illinois, you're familiar with our community. How do we get our voices heard? How do we get those in power to know, not just give us a handout, but we need some real help down That's here. Right. They know what's going on here. They see us. Why aren't they helping? What can we do? What are your suggestions? Well, you know, the Reverend William Barber, the Poor People Campaign, organizing all around the country, trying to bring power and pressure to bear, because the problem is we got too much poverty and not enough self-love. We got to love ourselves enough, respect ourselves enough, be able to come together, organize, mobilize, put pressure on the powers that be because it's too many poor people. We don't have enough resources in schools. We don't have enough jobs with a living wage. We don't have enough houses that are decent. So you got a spiritual crisis. How do you learn how to love yourself and others? You got a material crisis. How do you eliminate poverty? Yes, sir. Thank you so Thank very you much so for your time. And salute God, the work you're doing. Oh, God bless you. Oh, Lord. Yeah. All right. We're back at the East St. Louis Community College Center, and I'm standing here with a very, very longtime friend of mine and my whole family, Mrs. Darlene Swanson. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Thank you so much. And you know what? We are here, um, and you have brought Dr. Cornell West into the East St. Louis community and is sponsored by the Eugene Redman um, Writers Guild. The correct title for that um, your organization is? The Writers Club, Eugene B. Redman Writers Club. And actually we're the spearhead for this. Uh, we're a collaborative. There are other people who are assisting with this project, but Eugene is actually the catalyst for it because he knew Cornell's parents in uh, Sacramento and he met Cornell when he was still a college student in Sacramento. 
Okay. So this is years of germinating and ruminating to uh, entice him to come here to East St. Louis, and we're so thrilled about that. Well, and we are so grateful that you allow Smiles Television to be a part of this event today. Well, you know, we have been on the ground, running, working, developing, programming for 32 years. And I have been president all 32 years. And I have met all of the African derivative derived Nobel laureates mm. simply because I've had the opportunity to work with Eugene. Um, not only that, every major black writer that is writing today, we have access to either verbally uh, through oral communication, written communication, or personal um, um, collaboration and communi communication. I don't know too many other writers clubs in this world who are, are black writers who can say that. That is excellent, and we, and we thank God for you, and we are looking forward to a magnificent event today, and we don't want you to go away because we have much more. Stay tuned for more on Smiles TV. Nobody fundamentally knows why we're constituted in such a way that we love. Now, I'm a Christian, so I got some stories to tell. Mm -hmm. I can tell you about a Palestinian Jew named Jesus who enacted the highest levels of love on the cross in such a way that he tried to cr crush that love. The Roman Empire thought they did away with him, but he bounced back. The love could not be suffocated. <laughs> but I got a Christian tilt. You got Jewish brothers and sisters. They got their stories about him. Buddhists have their stories about him. Hindus have their stories about him, so forth and so forth. But so many times they come to the same conclusion. There's something about this love that brings we human beings most alive. And in that sense, the question that becomes, do we have the capacity to learn how to love others? After loving oneself. You gotta love yourself first. That's right, that's right. You're loving others, not loving yourself. That's pathological. That's right, that's right. The part of the problem with black people is, ooh, we got a whole lot of black people of everybody but black people. That's right. That's true. No, we want to love everybody beginning at home. And then let that love spill over from the chocolate sides to vanilla sides. And red sides and brown sides and yellow sides and so forth. It was the Afro-American, the women participating in the political arena. Is it wise? Is it wise? Is it wise? Is it wise? Oh, it's good stuff. And it is wise. All the wisdom that black women have, past, present, and unborn, we need full involvement. It is indeed wise, just like the persistence and the perseverance, which is so very important, you see. But keep in mind that the reason why one participates in the political system is because one is fundamentally committed to trying to improve the lives of everyone, especially the least of these, especially the vulnerable, especially the poor, working people across color, across class, across region and so forth. You see what I'm saying? Now you, have you heard, you, you've heard of Sister Shirley Chisholm? Yes. Oh, you check her out. <laughs> check that sister out. She's one of the grand examples of a public official who used what she had, her intelligence, her memory, her imagination, her love, to make the world better, especially for the least of these. We have the pleasure now of sitting with a young lady who is just as beautiful as her name, Charlois Lompkin. Such a pretty name. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for allowing us to chat with you. If you will, give us a little history of, of your role in the event today and um, who you are. Okay, I'd be glad to. I am a member of the Eugene B. Redman Writers Club, and uh, we are kind of uh, part of the sponsorship of this program today with Dr. Cornell West. Uh, as far as my participation, I'm on the board of the Eugene B. Brevin Writers Club and the club itself, we have a little um, ensemble group. We call ourselves the Solar Systems Ensemble and we do choreo poems and uh, we put together a little piece for today's celebration. 
Excellent, excellent. You know, I'm just so excited to be here, and I just thank God that you allowed us to come in and just capture a little footage as we go along. What impact do you want this to have on the East St. Louis community, and not just our community, but the world? Well, right now we need a little bit of redemption and revitalization. And we, we do hope that such this event, which we, we plan to televise widely, will just serve to show that there is still hope and all is not lost. And we want to thank you for your, your role in this. Are there any lasting role, words that you would like to share? Um, hope lives on. Hope lives on. You know what? That's, that's about the best ending that Smiles TV could ask for. Hope lives on. Stay tuned for more Smiles. Davis Dumont Dunham and Malcolm X in a concert of kinship and consciousness with Cornell West, where ancestry poetry of potency. Welcome to the Cornell West Fest and to East St. Louis's ambassadors and leaders of the U.S. and the world. Donald McHenry at the United Nations. Dwight Lamar Bush, Morocco. Dr. Lorana J. Morris, International President of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Reginald E. Petty, Country Director of Peace Corps Africa. Capital of CEOs. Beta Manager, President, APCO Worldwide. Dr. Gloria Bozeman, Herndon, Principal, GB Group, Global. Reginald Hudler, former president of BET. Tony D. Walls, owner of Book Camp Pilates, Belgium, London, Paris. Citadel of Sports Stars. Dr. Harry Edwards. Sports psychologist. Al Joyner, Don Harper Nelson, Jackie Joyner Kersey, gold medal Olympians. Eric Wright, four time Super Bowl champion. Quanzo Martin, former Atlanta Hawk and basketball's winningest coach at the University of Missouri, Columbia. Bastion of Arts. Diane Bolden Taylor. Lyric Soprano. Edna Patterson Petty, visual and fabric artist. Eugene Haynes, renowned concert pianist. Anita Wilson and Russell Gunn, Grammy nominees. Daryl Fennessy, Grammy winner. Hamiet Blewett, co-founder, World Saxophone Quartet. Warrington Hutland, film producer and director. Of course, the Red Man, Eugene, Poet Laureate of East St. Louis and two-time American Book Award recipient. Da Doom Dun, where ancestry's poetry of potency. Da Da Doom Doom Dun Dun, Davis Dumas Dunham and Malcolm X in a concert of kinship and consciousness with Cornel West. <laughs> Just look at this artwork that's behind me. And then when you look at the artwork, take a look at Mr. Ambrose Wesley, who's sitting right ne next to me. He's the artist, and he's here in honor of Dr. Cornell West. This is beautiful. Thank, thank you. Uh, I am so happy and privileged and humbled to have even been asked to be here for this presentation, this event. Tell me a little bit about the work. Well, I, uh, my, the people, the artists that I've studied were Vassarelli and Escher, and they do these one, what we call, uh, dimensional perspective work. And this here, this particular painting, Composition for Infinite Blue Space and Time, is in the series of other uh, paintings that I do that are blue. I have one painting similar to this that's in the museum in Taiwan, in the uh, Museum of Science and Technology. 
My goodness, I want to thank you so much for taking time to chat with us, and we're looking forward to the events of today. It looks like it's going to be a magnificent affair. Oh, this is this is going to be outstanding. This is probably this year one of the fantastic events that I've attended all year, and I've attended a lot of events, but how many times did you get to be in the room uh, around someone like a Dr. Carnell West and a Dr. Eugene Redman? Yes, sir, and we thank you again, and, and we love you. We love your work infinitely, so. <laughs> and we want to thank you. Don't go away. We have much more. We're just getting some clips of individuals prior to all of the, the excitement of Dr. Cornell West coming in today. Stay tuned for more smiles. I am sitting here with some of the absolute best from East St. Louis, Illinois, at the Eugene B. Redmond Writers Club presentation of Dr. Cornell West. Seated next to me is Mr. Reginald Petty, and next to him is his beautiful wife, Mrs. Edna Petty Patterson. Also standing, I have a new friend, and her, her last name is Hollett, and she's going to tell you all about herself, and we're going to just introduce you to some great things that are happening today. How are you doing? And tell us about your presentations here today and why, why you came out. Hi, thank you for having me here. I am here because I think it's important for the city of East St. Louis to be highlighted for the greatness that's here. Too often we hear too many negative things about the city, but there's so many wonderful things going on here and so many people doing moving things such as the Petties. And you know, you're with one of the great organizations in the area. Sunshine is one of my favorite individuals. Tell us about your organization and what you guys do. Uh, at the Sunshine Cultural Arts Center, we will celebrate 40 years of being together this year on June the 2nd. And what we do is we teach culture back to children. And the importance of that is if we don't teach, or teach children from where they come, then they have no idea of where it is that they can go. So they get the opportunity to learn about community, they get to learn about West African dance and culture, and they get to present that to different communities around the world. Uh, and that's what we do. So we've been doing that for 40 years, and we give this culture back for absolutely free. And it's been been free for 40 years. Look at the beauty that comes out of East St. Louis. Isn't she gorgeous? And sitting next to me, the Petties, how are you? Doing fine. We know why you're here, but give us a, a, some insight into what you want our community to gain as a result of bringing Dr. Um, West into our area. I think the main thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the knowledge of the importance of history, the importance of, uh, of identifying uh, who we are as a people. And to me, that sense of who we are, which includes East St. Louis's past, the number of people who success stories from East St. Louis around the world. And uh, uh, Cornell has often talked about uh, uh, the importance of cultural knowledge. And, uh, and he'll be talking about that, I'm sure, today. And hopefully the people who are listening to him, the students who are listening to him, will learn that, that it's important to, to be uh, an East St. Louisians. And I think the fundamental question for me right now is a question raised by a genius in the south side of Chicago named Lorraine Hansberry. And a raising in the sun. When she created a character who embodied more love in the history of the American state than any other character, past or present. I'm talking about mama. How do I pass on the rich tradition to Walter and Benitha and little Travis? And by Walter and Benitha, we talking about the youngest generation. And by Travis, we talking about the real, real young ones. So when my dear brother, the artistic genius and spiritual giant that he is, Eugene Redmond. When he asked me to come, I said, I'm coming. <laughs> you ask me. <coughs> he gives me instructions, I move. Because he's part of that same tradition as Lorraine Hansberry, and he's been passing on that tradition for the last 80 years or so. But most importantly, I think we have to have a dialogue with the younger generation to try to learn from them. That's why I've been studying this video by Childish Gambino, I think it is. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. This is America. You can see Marcus Garvey in that video. 
long as black people in America, they'll live lives of ruin and disaster, never be treated like human beings treated right by the authorities. You see Martin Luther King in that video, what did Martin used to say? I'd rather be dead than afraid. And that brother's working it too. <laughs> he moves a little different than we move. You know what I mean? I'm closer to the dramatics and he's closer to the hip hop artist, but that's all right. It's the same tradition. See Josephine Baker and Kathleen Dunham in that video. Because when you're talking about a quest for truth, if you're not talking about art, the last poets taught us, you're not talking about music, you're not talking about how to use your body connected with your mind and your soul and your heart. So we're not just talking about being smart. Let the phones be smart. We got to be wise. That's right. That's right. Let the phones be smart. We got to be courageous. That's right. Let the phones be smart. We got to be loving. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Now, enslaved Africans, 244 years, just listen to the spirituals and you recognize they understood that very well under American terrorism called Jim and Jane Crow. Listen to the blues. Mm -hmm. They understood that very well. And now we got Jim Crow Jr. Mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with right now. Not just the new Jim Crow and the mass incarceration regime, but neighborhoods still segregated, schools still segregated, social networks still too segregated. You see. But listen to Stevie Wonder. Gene Chandler, Curtis Mayfield, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Temptation, Michael Jack, Prince, what they talking about? They're not just entertainers, they're love warriors. Well, yep. younger generation, can you keep that love tradition alive? Look who I'm sitting here with, the best mayor of East St. Louis, Illinois, my favorite because guess what, he was my boss and he's still <laughs> still doing great things with Officer Funeral Home, Carl E. Officer. Thank you for taking time to talk with me. Well, very kind of you. Thank you very much. It's always good talking to you, Stephanie. This is a great event, Dr. Cornell West in East St. Louis, Illinois. What does this mean to the community and um, what impact do you think this can have? Well, when we go back and think about men like Paul Lawrence Dunbar and others, Paul Robeson who came to East St. Louis many, many years ago, uh, to have a, a man of the statue of Dr. Uh, Cornel West come here and address our community to meet with uh, great leaders uh, like Eugene Redmond and others, I think it means an awful lot to the history, the culture, and the opportunity for growth. Uh, I would hope that uh, the leaders in the school districts, uh, the leaders obviously here at the university and others will embrace some of the uh, the teachings of Dr. West, some of the uh, correspondence that he's had, um, and allow us to continue to grow with our heritage. I heard a rumor that you may be running for office again. It's no longer a rumor. I've confirmed that I am a, a serious candidate for mayor of the city of East St. Louis. I mean, I live here. I would like to see uh, the city go in a new direction. I want to see us eliminate the city manager form of government and come back to the strong mayor form. I don't think that the last 30 years has served us well with the city manager. And so therefore, um, I have uh, listened to some of my friends and other supporters who encouraged me to run and I decided uh, to do that. It is a challenge in some ways, but um, I would imagine if this would be my fifth term, I, I think I might have it down where I might understand how to do this. Uh, I've had enough experience, so maybe i get it right this time. I'm standing here with um, attorney Lanidia Kaysen, and um, this was a great event. And um, you guys have done some wonderful work here. Tell us um, your thoughts about what, you, what happened here today. 
I thought that it was a great overview and a prelude for what's going to go on this evening. We're going to talk about some hot button social issues relating to our cultural, educational, and political environment here in East St. Louis. And it's just good to have the community come out and engage. And let's talk about how we can fix the problems. We know what the problems are. We see it every day. We see the blighted downtown. We see that we don't have a hospital. We see that we don't have a viable economic base. We see that we don't have ownership in the riverfront property. We see that um, neither the East St. Louis residents uh, nor East St. Louis itself as a community own the majority of the land in East St. Louis. So we need to figure out how can we recapture our community. And I thought that uh, Dr. West would be the kind of intellectual radical to come and offer this community a high dose of um, educational Narcan to, to, to snap us out of. Wow. snap us out of this unconsciousness that we're I want to thank you and I understand that you are going to be running for office again yes ma'am I will be in November 6th uh, please vote for me La Nina Casey for circuit judge I've served this uh, county for 12 and a half years an associate circuit judge and I'm I'm trying to move on up as the Jeffersons would say well wow. and you know we keep saying smiles is gonna have you back on the show we got you back this time but we need a real sit down okay. but thank you again God thank bless you, you. Thank you. So what are your thoughts about what, how it went today? Oh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm euphoric, actually. I'm so happy for East St. Louis, the turnout, the, uh, the questions. You know, this is good timing because uh, the future of East St. Louis is at stake. You know, it seems to be uh, in, a, in a crisis mode too often. And with this kind of... Um, uh, uh, remedial mm -hmm. approach, therapeutic. You know, just people, East St. Louis is together looking at each other, considering some of the same issues and challenges together, it means it can spread. And that, uh, for me, the purpose of this day is to recruit people who will become uh, soldiers in the army of, uh, you know, the liberation of the city. You know, soldiers of truth. You know, soldiers of love, soldiers of honesty, of consciousness, again. And so, you know, and we're just halfway through it. <laughs> wow, well, Dr. Eugene yeah, Redman, Dr. Eugene Redman with the um, Writers Club, he organized this along with um, all those who work with him, and he's our poet laureate for the city of St. Louis. We love him, and thank you so much, Dr. Redman. Thank you. Thank you have you. a great day. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're wrapping it up at Smiles Television Talk Show. This has been a tremendous affair. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. Jesus is the Lord. The Lord be magnified. Thank you again. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Image a nation. Image a world. IDEX Media. Awesome sauce. Yeah, baby. Smiles Television Talk Show wants to showcase your business, organization, church, and activities. If you have an interest in being a guest on Smiles Television Talk Show, or if you have any show ideas, contact Stephanie Anthony Miles at smilestv777 at gmail.com. You may also call 618-741-3770. Tell your friends to subscribe to the Smiles YouTube channel. Let Smiles TV increase your reach. Remember, you look better with smiles.